I didn't pass my uh, <laughs> licensing exam for for three times. But in the, when I first took it in the history of architecture part, uh, we were sitting in this huge room in the New York Coliseum, about 1,200 uh, erstwhile architects taking this insanity test. <laughs> And everyone turned the page about the same time. It was multiple choice, and the whole room broke up because they knew <laughs> I was in the room. And there was a picture of the Farnsworth house by Mies van der Rohe, Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright, and this house. I wasn't licensed. I was taking the exam. <laughs> and the question was, which one of these houses represent organic architecture? So I really wanted to say this house, but I said falling water just to, so I wouldn't fail. I, I want to fail the exam. Uh, but that was... I'm glad you said that. that. You are? <laughs> you didn't want me to fail the exam? No, never. Uh, so that, that, that just sort of proved to me that uh, these kind of professional licensing exams don't mean anything. That art is art. You can't license it. So when we finished the drawings, we came out and tried to get contractors to build the house. And the lowest price was somewhere around $70,000, and the highest price was about eighty-four. And it was extraordinarily frustrating, and I had to tell Rowie that the house was over budget, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I said, I think I can build it, that I'd rather try to build it. And it changed the, my whole life as an architect, because I quit my job. I got a teaching job at Pratt. I never taught before, so it gave me some income. And I got these guys from Brooklyn who'd done a little job for me in New York, set them up out here in the in what was the old part of East Hampton called we called it Tobacco Road. It was it was that kind of <laughs> that kind of place. Well Charles came across a lot of obstacles with the building and zoning air, uh, people in East Hampton because the neighbors didn't want to see that kind of a structure. All the townspeople called it a cotton gin, you know, making disparaging remarks about our southern heritage and stuff like that. It didn't look like a house. It looked like a... A, a silo. A silo. And a laundry chute. And you're right, laundry chute. One day when I was doing fishing ham and Ganson on Bluff Road, I saw Bob Grothney watering his maple tree with the, with the equipment that God gave him. And when I came back home that evening, I told my folks, I said, you know that crazy fellow down on Bluff Road who's building that, that crazy house? He waters the trees just the way we do, so he can't be that bad after all. That's how we accepted him. Uh, and after that, uh, we, we, when the house was built, he invited us down, the whole family, to take a tour, shall you say, because it was uh, like the first of many now crazy houses in this town. <laughs>